I've been uh, checking how can we overcome as Christians and we live a victorious life whereby, you know, we don't worry what will happen tomorrow. I've been living that kind of life for years now where I don't even worry about what will happen tomorrow. And I realize that it's only in one area where we need to overcome. Tell anybody, there's one area you need to overcome. You need to overcome. If you want to live a victorious life. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's read Romans 3 from 9 to 18. Okay, let me read. Okay. It says, Well then, are we Jews better off than they? Not at all. For we have already charged that both Jews and Greeks, Gentiles, are under the control of sin and subject to its power as it is written, and forever remains written. There is none righteous, meaning that none that meets God's standard, not even one. There is none who understands. There is none who seek for God. All have turned aside. Together, they have become useless. There is none who does good, no, not one. And their throat is an open grave. They habitually deceive with their tongues. The venom as ups is beneath their lips, and their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are shift to shift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their path, and they have not known the path of peace. Uh, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, we know that whatever the law of Moses says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that the excuses of every mouth may be silenced, and that all the world may be held accountable to God. Can you see the, the verse I'm reading? Amen. Okay, you will understand when we are talking. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. When I was reading this, I was questioning what the writer of Romans was saying. And, and I realized that he was showing the Romans where the law was working. That the law was presented because of sin. Even Jesus came because of sin. But you could see when the writer here was saying, you know, you must know that this has been set for many years written. What was written here was a, a man always always become useless. Why? Because no one seek God. Always sinning, automatically running short of the glory. But there is something that this man said here. He said, especially in verse 13, he said, their throat is an open grave. They habitually deceive with their tongues. Just tell your neighbor, say, guard your tongue. So that is where these people were doing. Except that that they they become useless. useless. When God looked at them, he could not see that anyone 
who's ready to live the life which is right. Everybody was living his own life, lying to his neighbor. I found that there are many, many tongues that are written in the Bible. If we read in Proverbs 15, from 3 to 4, you find a soothing tongue and pervasive tongue. So there's a soothing tongue. There's a pervasive tongue. You can see that our tongues, you know, are not the same. Uh, those actions we do makes us also to talk about them. If you read that verse, can you read verse 3, Mama? On Proverbs 15, verse 3 to 4. Proverbs 15, verse 3 to 4. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, watching the evil and the good in all their end of us. Stop there. The eyes of the Lord are every place. I understand when the Bible says, the eyes of the Lord are every place. The first scripture we have read was coming to pass that there was no one who was seeking God. In other words, when God was looking around, he see everybody, you know, sinning with their tongues. Can you read verse 4? Verse 4, a soothing tongue speaking words that build up and encourage is a tree of life, but a pervasive tongue speaking words that overwhelm and depress crush, crushes the spirit. You see, this is what is happening that, you know, there are two kinds of people on earth, those who encourages and those who destroys. <laughs> But their, their tongues are the weapon. So Either you destroy or you encourage. There's no way you can be in between. When you're given a responsibility, you are bound to encourage or to destroy. No, the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are every place. So Remember the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are on the faithful. On every place it means the Lord is searching for the faithful. And who are the faithful? Are those who encourage others. Let's carry on. Let's go. We have different kinds of tongues, but we must guard our tongues. Because many of our problems are coming from our tongues. If we read, you will find that in James 1 verse 26, verse 26, if you, have, you say you are a religious person, ah, you are a Christian, you are a Christian, and you are failing to control your tongue or to you, you are not what you say you, you, you mean. A, a Christian must be able to control his tongue. encouraging others. I know there are tongues that, you know, destroys. That, like if you can read in, in Psalm 52, verse 2. There, there are destructive tongues. You know, destructive tongues are there because someone wants to be building himself. Hallelujah. Amen. If you read that verse, we, we are talking, James 1, verse 26. James 1, 26. We must know how to control our tongues. Why? Because what you are facing now is the results of what you were saying. If you always say, I'm poor, I'm poor, you will die poor. Whatever you say, you become. Tell them, whatever you say, you become. You, you cannot talk 
cheap and you you become expensive o ka se bolela ntjo tsa fase fase ba tithola le go nthong tsa go hodim if you spend time talking and you are failing to control your time a o fetsa ka go bolela you are frustrated confused o palelwa o laola le le mo thathaka mkop na maka lo thaka thaka ne o sa tshitsa ba tsa no one can be able to define you ba tsho ba 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 le ka thalusa you have got a tongue but you can't define it ka re le wena na o le me le teng mara o khono ti thalusa If you read there you realize that you need to control your time. Tell you you need to control your time. Let's take your prayer. Are you Let's take your prayer. Are you to me wa rapela. You are being checked by the one who look at your time. O lthotjwe o lebeletse ka wa lebeletse le le mela gao. Have you ever realized that the people who are so much having a lot of money on earth are on, people who are using time to work. O ke le hore ba thu ba le wa bona hore ba thu nang le tshelete kudu mo le faseng ke ba 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 ritsang le leme. People are so much blessed. They don't use hands; they use tongues. But to Baba Shufeche, I will never show me shame. To Baba Shufeche, I'm a lame. So your your tongue is a weapon to greatness. So lele mela ga o kisi shumi shwa sao ya mo ni akango hol. Is a weapon. Kisi shumi shwa. To your greatness. Si ve shwa sao ya hol. So control your tongue. So la ola lele mela ga o. If you run your tongue everywhere, you will go everywhere. Ah, we now kitu misa lele mela ga o tetenele wa oti. Tell me but if you run your tongue everywhere I will get him shall le mela ga go hlelele you go everywhere o ta sepela na ye ka moka so in other ways even how you control your tongue that's how you you live your life ka mo gola o lang le le mela ona ke ka mo gopela ngo bophelo ba gao today we have got many problems that nobody can solve when we question we found is what you were doing re na le mathata mantshi majatshi a u na le mothware a arabela a re lebela re thuditsa ke dintho tshe nne o ditia What you were saying that's what you do. Lela kinto tsho di dia. You know you cannot do what you don't say. O ka se di ento o sa ibolele. You can't do what you don't say. O ka se di re ento o sa ibolela. You can still say what you cannot do. O ka no ibolela taba tse o wa se di dia. Mara o ka se di ento o sa ibolele. O ka bolela di taba mara wa sa di dire. So many people already we know that there are challenges are not from witches and wizards pancheria tse bo di challenge ja bona di thai o ba loe le dinoge ni are inside their mouth ba loe ba bona e ke ka ba re le mahano a bona if you read proverbs 18:21 are ba la di ema 18:21 it says death and life are in the power of your tongue le go le bo phelo bo bo mateng ba le le mela gao and those who love it and ba ba di ratao and indulge it it will eat its fruit And about the atulang kan nepo, but also the consequences of their ways. Leman butu kuba manjua ba abulichiu. Meaning that your tongue. Era wale lele melagao. It's eating. It's eating what it was saying. Lija din toche ne di liti bolela. When whatever you put in your tongue. Kama kache udi loke lang lele me. It's equivalent with what you normally say. Tille kana liche la udi bolela lang me time inchi. Tell me about whatever you is eating today. Kama kache no udi ishale kono. It's not different with what you normally say. Adi afapa na liche la udi lang udi bolela. Can you see the issue why Jesus says a man can eat from the words above? Are mo mo to akapila. He was just still saying, "Satan, I'm still in fasting." He, he was not saying, "I can create ways to produce." He was saying, "You cannot change me from the fasting that the Holy Spirit gave." I'm eating the ways that I'm, I'm saying. I'm still saying to you what I'm eating. You eat what you say. You walk what you say. You sit what you say. You dress what you say. You are what you say. I want to say to you that the present situation does not determine your tomorrow. 
What determines your tomorrow is what you say. The hunger, the pain, the shame. Does not determine your future. But what you are saying about it, your response of your situation is uttered by your mouth. Your tongue shaped the words that will bring the results of what you are facing. James 3, Jacob 3, 2 to 8. 2 to 8. You know, that's where I found that the Bible says if we cannot stumble in what we say, we are perfect. Tell them, if you cannot stumble on what you say, you are what? You are perfect. Can I tell you this? I was looking on the issues of Elijah. Why Elijah put his head between his feet? Why Elijah look at it? Why he bara mangutu ahai? Between his knees. Bara matolo ahai. And send Ar Romela. The servant and said, "Go. Go and check the register." Uyo libele la urudia la pola yatana. Did you realize that if he didn't do that, he was supposed to be affected? Because when this man come back, you will say, the servant will just say, sorry. <laughs> man of God, I, <laughs> this time eh, you are a failure. This time. I, I know you predict things to happen, but, but this time, uh, let's forget it. So Elijah just put his hand on his knees. So Elijah na no look at the toya guy matolonga hai. Between his knees, he said, "Go again." He didn't want even to look at him because he knew that if he come back, if he comes back, when he look at his eyes, he will show that what you are saying. Is nothing. In other way, you will plant doubt. This man said, I've said it. But I don't need any facial distraction that can affect what I said. I don't want to see anybody bringing doubt on what I believe in. And Elijah became perfect. I mean, what, what he spoke came to pass. Do you know what is happening to us today? We share everything with everybody. And sometimes their appearance, their facial appearance is telling us what we are saying will never happen. Can I tell you this? It will happen if you say it and you don't care who's around you. I say it will happen this year. What you want to say it will happen this year. Yeah. Without looking at any environment. I don't care how you are looking at me. Whether you are frowned or you are smiling. But what I know, what I'm saying, it will prove that I'm perfect before God. You know, this is our challenge even today. If you want to see, read Matthew 15 verse 11. You will see what Jesus said. There. He just said, no, a man is not defiled by what he eats. A man is defiled by what comes from his mouth. You know, I have learned something here. I have learned that Whatever you say, bring distraction on you or uplift you. To be perfect before him. The reason why you are praying and you can't see anything. There's a deity somewhere. 
we need to clean ourselves up. It's not because you didn't pray. It's because you are in a transition. There's a process that is. You, you cannot, you know, when you are still cooked, you cannot be eaten. So allow God to finish with you. He is busy with you. So if you know, Deal with yourself before you take that thing. Let me tell you this. The reason why many of us are professing that we, we say we will receive and we are not receiving. It's because we are still in the process. We are still and if God allowed that blessing to come, that blessing will be a curse. It will bring problem to us. Have you ever found yourself being blessed with a car? After you give a testimony, when you're on the road, then somebody come and hit you. You know, so that you take even what you have to the page. But when you are becoming perfect, whatever comes, glorify God. Whatever comes your way, it will never make you suffer. It will make you rich. The blessings of the Lord makes us rich. Can you tell your neighbor, say, my friend, what comes to you if you are not perfect yet? It becomes a curse. Can, can you be perfect in your mouth? Be perfect here. Be perfect. I have already seen some people who are not perfect trying to get something which will make them to suffer. Which will make them not to sleep. Sometimes you find that God is delaying you so that whatever you say tomorrow it won't backfire on you. So your words so your time is important. important. If you want to see how big are you in the Lord, don't look how you know scriptures. Check what you say. Check what you say. And you sit with people, what do you talk? If you sit with people, you talk about others. You are still defiling yourself. You are far away. I don't know if you are hearing me. Tell the person, if you sit and you are still talking about others, the question is, when are you going to talk about yourself? Because when you talk about yourself, you are uplifting yourself, you are speaking the words of faith, check your tongue, you must guard it. Can you guard your tongue? Guard your tongue. And you will make it. Let me try to tell you what happened by the time of, of David. This man called Shimei. If you can read about him in First Kings chapter two. That man you will see. Read thirty six to forty two. You will see his punishment come after three years. You know what he did. This man was. It's First Kings. What he did was, after he cursed the king, he cursed the king thinking that his time was finished. Not knowing that God, God was busy dealing with his life. What happened to the king? Remember that the king sinned. And he took Bathsheba. You know the story. But from there, he was told that there will be a fight in his house. He experienced that fight. He was happy. He was happy that God brought that punishment. But now, when Shimei 
was meeting him. He was running away from his son Absalom. He was just saying, oh, this guy is over, he has killed our people. Many, many Benjamins were finished. So now it's better I love at him. He began to throw stones. He began to curse the king. Not knowing that his time was not finished. The time of the king, as long as he was still alive, his, his time was pill. not finished. And they were th he was throwing the stone, cursing him. Cursing him that he loved blood. The man of blood. But look what happened that day. I, that story, I love it. He said, this man, don't kill him. Because many people around the king wanted to kill him. He said, please, don't kill him. He's worth it to do what he's doing. If my son, that is coming from my lawyer. Oh, is doing what he's doing. What, what about, about this one? This one, one is worthy to do it. Oh, Let's leave him. Let's leave him. Let's give him to God. Give him to God. You know, David could not forget what he did. When God restored him to his position, position after the death of Absalom, when Absalom, now he was old, he, he gave a to command to, to, to Solomon and say, oh, Solomon, there's this man who cares but don't kill him. Just give him instruction. You know what Solomon did? He was just saying, okay, I won't kill you. I know you cursed my father. Don't, I won't even kill you. But listen to this. Can you see Kidron Valley? If you moved out from Jerusalem and you passed that valley, you will die. Can I tell you this? That man said, oh, thank you. Eh? Uh, you are my king. Are my king. He, he never knew that, that what he was speaking will make him to pass the children. What happened was after three years because he was a crafty man he thought Solomon was forgetting. One day he heard that uh, the, the the donkeys went away. His servants ran away. So he decided to chase. He passed the Kidron Valley. When he came back, the king ah, said, Remember what Obola, we promised. I didn't want just to kill you. But this time you killed yourself. You spoke yourself. You won't pass Kidron Valley. No, your punishment could no, not no, come no, same no, time. No, but this time, no, you won't leave the chamber. He no, was pressed down and killed. No, no, Sometimes what we speak no, won't bring punishment now. We will just carry on like no, no one knows. But one day no, is one day. No, Whoever might have cursed you might have be getting the same thing. You might not be knowing. Maybe you are cursed and nothing happened. Maybe it will take two years or three years, even ten years. But the day punishment comes, that punishment will bring destruction. Can I tell you? Even you, you might be saying things, saying nothing is happening. Be careful on what you say. Your tongue must be guarded. Because it's possible that you can take three years lying, lying kissing people, them, pain, doing whatever. But one day, you will be surprised you get punishment. You must guard your tongue. Some punishment is what we say. I don't know if you're hearing me. Listen to this. This is a challenge of the fruit of the tongue. If it's a curse, it won't come when you are thinking. 
It will just come when you are not even aware. I, I want to pray for you today. So that you confess your case. But at the same time, you withdraw what you say. And God who looks around will find you. God who sees everyone will change your situation. I don't know if you are hearing me. Ask somebody very close to you. Do you know that kissing someone is very bad for you? James, when he spoke about it, he said, cursing and blessing are not supposed to be found in our town. Cursing and blessing is not supposed to be in our town. You are not supposed to curse anyone. You are always supposed to bless someone. Many people are facing challenges are not coming from other people's curses. They are coming from from their own I don't know if you are hearing me. Let me show you a scripture. If we read Proverbs 21 verse 23, it says, He who guards his mouth and, and his tongue, he guards himself from trouble. He guards himself from trouble. If you want to be in trouble. Just speak whatever you don't know. If you want to see that, you know, we don't know people. I'll give you, I'll give you an example about the people who love each other. They want to marry each other. If they are coming together is three months. To six months, it's possible that they may not be knowing each other. Possible that everyone will be saying, I love you. you are Everybody entertaining each other. You are, you are beautiful. You are handsome. You are like Volvo. You are like Volvo. It's possible that when before marriage you, <laughs> you entertain each other so much <laughs> and you find you don't even know each other. But the day you marry now what comes inside you is the one that will be visible now. I don't know if you hear it there. The fire starts the hidden things will come. That's why you will start to hear somebody say, you're so stupid. If I didn't know, if I, never, if I knew this, I was not supposed to have married you. That's why now people will start to know, you hear stories, you just hear, oh God, I never knew you are so ugly like this. Because, because, you know, if we don't check and guard our tongues, <laughs> we will praise each other not our way. Not facing reality. Many, many of us, we are, the, you know, I don't forget that. <laughs> I want to tell you the time one day where I wake up in the morning. I was, with, uh, I was with my wife. My wife says, I, I didn't know you were so ugly like this. That's <laughs> why I was saying, Mama, next time we will be feeling so. I say, Yeah? I say, I didn't even know you were ugly like this. I say, I understand when the mountain is far. <laughs> but go close to you, you see rocks. <laughs> But because already there is no more training. Your ways can change me. Do you know ways can change someone's character and beauty? 
You can start small. After you realize your partner is ugly. And you were not aware. You don't know why you are. And you are realizing later that you are married. And you don't know. Begin just to say, yeah, you are beautiful. You will see what ways of your tongue can do. You will see your partner started to walk in a way of showing beauty. You will start to see your partner sitting in front of a mirror. You will start to see red lips and also yellow lips and whatever. Words from your tongue can build someone. The ugly person can be more beautiful. I don't know if you're hearing me. Can, can you tell us about friends? I want to use the words I have to change your character, your character, your appearance. Not trouble. We can bring trouble. We can really bring trouble. You know, it's possible that you bring trouble to your marriage, to your job, to your business, everywhere. Change and speak what you like. It's easy. You just sit there. You realize, hey, when we grow up, it's not like the time we met when we were young. No, when we were young, everybody was nice here. You began to even buy a wig. You bring it to home. I don't know if you're hearing me. And say, if you can put this, you are nice. Because you saw other people outside. So you bring it here to home. You say, you know what? I mean, just take away my son. And where are you? And from there, you just say, if you wear these shoes, you are nice. You're the one who can do it. Talk what is right. Your tongue is important. It can change everything. Today I want you to change something. Not to destroy. Did you see that scripture I'm telling you? Let's read it again. Proverbs. Proverbs 21, 23. Can you just read it aloud in your Bible? He who guards his mouth and his tongue guards himself from trouble. From trouble. You're the one who can say, no, I can't say this. One of the things that, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I've, this has been my motto. If I say that, I will say this, it will bring pain. I don't say it. Sometimes you will speak something and you'll be surprised after you tell the person, the person hangs himself. Only take the gun, he kill all of you, even oh, you I of nine nine. Nine 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 now, Papa Tristis, our Bolaya. That nine nine becomes your death. Nine nine, you have to go in. Tell them to guard your tongue. Which I'm told I'm going to come and let him. How many of you want to guard your tongue? You have been talking too much. Can you pray too much? You have been talking too much. Can you pray too much? Can you pray too much? Can you pray too much? I say you have been talking to me. Stop talking and begin to pray. If now you are, you, are, you are sitting like this, there's nothing to say. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Until you find peace. You have been talking. And what you are talking, you are not even sure. Of. What if someone come and say this is the truth? You are still going to deny it because you have spoken to me. Let me try to say to you the reason why people defend themselves is because they have spoken too much. Even when the truth comes out, they can fight you. They, they, they can kill you for the truth. Because they, they have spoken too much. If you speak too much, the day we show you the truth, you will have to destroy the truth and destroy the one who is showing you. I don't know if you're hearing me. I want us to check before we talk. Let me just show you the last scripture. There are two people. 
in the Bible. Please encourage me a lot. Is Job Job and David. Letafita. Job and David. Job I told you about David. David overcome all his battles. Even now he still called a great king. Job trusted Job. God with everything. He hates sin. He was upright. And the Bible says Bible even God was proud about him. But his secret is found in Job 27. The job secret, Job 27. Job 27. From verse 1 to 6. I want us to read verse one of those six. two scriptures. We found the secrets of Job. Yes. Just read from verse 1. Job 27, verse 1. Job continued his discourse and said, As God lives, who has taken away my right and denied me justice. And the Almighty, who has caused bitterness and grief for my soul, as long as my life is within me, and the breath of God is still in my nostrils, my lips will not speak unjustly, nor will my tongue utter deceit. Far be it from me that I should admit you, you are right. If you, your accusation against me, until I die, I will not remove my integrity from me. I hold fast my uprightness and my right standing with God, and I will not let them go. Okay, my stop, heart... Stop there. You can hear this man. He said, this is my secret. I know where I come from with God. I will never leave my integrity. What, what I, will I will keep silent. I'll make sure that my lips are not open. In any accusation. Remember what happened to Job was his three friends. Where say Job you have seen. You cannot face what you are The reason you are facing all this. Somewhere you have seen. It. This man has tried to prove that it's not because of sin. Though he was not having full information or from God, it was Satan. After God praised himself by him. and Satan wanted to prove that what you are saying about Job is not. You know, when I learned this, I realized that truly, if God is not with us, whether we prove to people that we are right, they will never believe that. Especially when you are facing challenges. Because people judge by the challenges. Some people who are servants of God, they have nothing today. They cannot be believed today. Even if you say these are servants of God, you can't believe. Why? They have got nothing. But God is aware. Can I say this? Job said, I will never see. I will never open my mouth and speak decent. Listen to this. Job was having an opportunity Job to speak whatever to protect himself. But he said, I will never say anything. I know what I'm going through is not because of my sin. That's the story of Job. Let me show you the story of David in the book of Psalm 39. 39. From verse 1. I said I will guard my ways that I may not sin with my tongue. I Don't will stop there. He said, I said I'll guard my ways so that I may not sin 
I will muzzle my mouth while the wicked are in my presence. Mm. David say he will make sure that his mouth is so close. If he's in the presence of the wicked. Yeah. Mm. I was mute and silent before my enemies. I refrained even from good. And my distress grew worse. My distress grew worse. Hey, yeah. He said he, he, in his front of his enemies, he was end up keeping quiet. But his distress grew worse. Alright, carry on, mama. My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire bend. Then I spoke with my tongue. Lord, let me know my life's end and to appreciate the extent of my days. Let me know how frail I am, how transient is my stay here. Before you have made my days as short as hand with, and my lifetime is as nothing in your sight. Surely every man at his best is a mere breath as wisps of smoke, a vapor that vanishes, cellar. Surely every man walks around like a shadow in a, sh carac in a charade. Surely they made an uproar for nothing. Each one builds up riches, not knowing who will receive them. Mm. Can you hear that verse there? I mean, if you look at the whole chapter, go and read it at all. It shows that we are spending time in vanity. I mean, my challenge today that makes someone be to beat his chest. Challenge This man say, no, I would rather keep quiet because if people make noise, the man is like a vapor. Tomorrow you, you won't find there. If you want to know that, if you, if you want to go to your village, where you grow up, you will find that the people you think you know, many of them are gone. Just, just, just go and visit where you come from. You realize that life is like a vapor. So this man is better I silence myself. I keep quiet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In front of my enemies, I make sure that my mouth will be shut. I want to tell you something that you don't know. I found when I was, if you can go, go and read about Jesus. You will be surprised even when there's an opportunity to answer. Jesus will just keep quiet. I was shocked when he was taken to Herod. That's why he was supposed to have spoken with the Lord. But he, he just kept quiet. He, he know, you could just question why this person was so quiet like that. A king of kings. In front of a king, he, he acted so stupid. He knew that if he speaks, it will disturb the plan of God. If the moment he just speaks, the issue of crucifixion, it won't happen. Sometimes when we talk, we disturb the plan of the living. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. Tell me, my friend. If you, you have got opportunity to talk, when people are accusing you, it's better you keep quiet. Because you will disturb the plan of God. The plan of God, the plan of God it always says, whether it's too early or late, you are a winner. 
Whether it's too early or late, you are an overcomer. It's better you silence yourself. Can you tell me, I want to silence myself. And keep quiet. How I many of you want to do that I want to say congratulations. Something will happen. God will fight for you. Guard your time. Tell them, guard your time.